Hello, I'm Chris Martin from the University of New South Wales, Sydney. And this video clip is a briefing on what's happening in rental housing in Australia at the current critical time. I'll briefly cover developments in policy and markets in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. But first, I'll give a little background on the rental housing sector in Australia. Private rental housing in Australia is our second largest housing sector and it has been for 70 years. Uh, over one quarter of Australian households rent privately, and that share has been trending up since the late 1980s, uh, at the expense of both owner occupation and social housing. It's now less than 5% of households that live in social housing. It's never been as large a sector as the UK's, though never more marginalised than it is now. So a, a range of household types rent privately, uh, about half are in the lowest two quintiles by income, and about a third of the total are low-income households paying unaffordable rents. The sector is mostly owned by another group of households, higher-income households. There's little institutional ownership of rental housing in Australia, apart from the student accommodation niche. Um, there's rising interest in build-to-rent, but it hasn't taken off as in the UK. Rather, the vast bulk of Australia's uh, landlords are individuals, they're mostly of working age, and they mostly own one or two properties. That makes investment property ownership uh, more widespread here than in the UK. Uh, but Australian landlords still are on average uh, high income households uh, with high wealth. About 80% own their properties subject to mortgages, about 60% run at a net rental loss that is they're negatively geared uh, and they're speculating on capital growth. The regulation of tenancies in Australia largely accommodates this small holding speculative ownership pattern. Each of Australia's uh, states and territories has its own residential tenancies legislation. They differ in the details, but they're on a broadly common model. And that is uh, mild consumer protection, there's prescribed standard forms of agreement, accessible dispute resolution, uh, market rents, and ready but orderly termination. Uh, that includes provision for fairly quick termination for breach and for landlords to terminate tenancies without grounds. So how has this sector been affected by COVID-19? In the second half of March, Australia responded to the pandemic by rapidly suppressing commerce and social intercourse, that is by staying home. This meant jobs were suddenly lost, incomes were drastically reduced, and the prospect of widespread rent arrears and evictions was heightened. Australian governments, the federal government and the state and territory governments coordinating through uh, a new national cabinet, launched several policy interventions aimed at the household sector generally and at the private rental sector specifically. Uh, the federal government sought to replace some of the household sector's lost income through a temporary boost to the unemployment benefit and by introducing a new wage subsidy paid through employers, uh, similar to that in the UK. Workers in Australia were also allowed to access their superannuation savings. On the 29th of March, the National Cabinet announced a six month moratorium on evictions. Uh, in residential and commercial tenancies. It flagged that there'd be more detail to come and encourage landlords and tenants to negotiate regarding rent payments. Uh, implementing a regime of eviction protection and rent relief has proved to be contentious. Uh, initially, the, uh, the outcomes of negotiations appear to have been highly variable. We had media reports of rent reductions, rent deferrals, uh, flat out refusals to consider altering any obligations, uh, rent increases in some cases, and also notoriously a suggestion from agents that tenants should access their superannuation to pay rent, uh, at least until they were warned off doing that by the financial services regulator. Now, uh, two months after that announcement, most jurisdictions have enacted legislative frameworks for altering rent liabilities and preventing evictions. Uh, the common approach has been to define fairly narrowly a class of COVID-19 affected tenants, that is people who either 
have the illness themselves or who have lost a significant amount of income uh, because of the, the recession and to exempt them temporarily from certain types of termination proceedings and then to facilitate an individual level negotiation between landlords and tenants, uh, including through mediation and conciliation services provided by state agencies. These negotiations may result in rent reductions or in mere deferrals uh, of liabilities to a later date. Certainly, real estate agents in, in public comments have been pushing for deferrals rather than reductions. These frameworks uh, differ between jurisdictions as to the extent of coverage, as to what grounds for termination is still permitted, uh, and other details. And there's differences beneath them too in the already existing residential tenancies legislation uh, to which they've been added. And that includes uh, the, the amount of discretion that's afforded tribunals to decline termination orders. Most states and territories have also introduced financial assistance schemes targeted to the private rental sector. Uh, the common approach here has been to provide land tax rebates to landlords who agree to reduce rents and also additional cash payments to a narrower class of hardship case. Uh, under existing land tax provisions, many landlords already don't pay. Uh, so there is a question about where the benefit of that relief is really going to go. We're starting to see now some early data about rental market impacts from the pandemic and the recession. Vacancy rates have increased, especially in the CBDs, uh, the, the inner suburbs and near universities. Uh, international students and visitors have departed. Younger renters uh, have returned to, to parents in some cases. And thousands of Airbnb properties that are concentrated in these, these areas have returned, at least for the moment, to the residential uh, market. In New South Wales, uh, the median rent for new tenancies uh, was down 6% uh, just from March to April. So there appears to be some scope for, for renters, even those not strictly uh, COVID-19 affected, to negotiate uh, rent reductions outside those formal frameworks, but they have to be willing and able to, to threaten to move to do so. Less is known about the impacts of the moratoriums. Uh, no Australian jurisdiction produces transparent data about terminations and evictions. The data collection about rent negotiations is patchy. Um, Victoria does have a system for recording results uh, of negotiations. About 9,000 variations have been recorded there. Uh, the average reduction reportedly is about 30%. Looking ahead, all states and territories uh, are on a staged path to lifting economic suppression. And in September, October, uh, both the federal income support payments and the eviction moratoriums are scheduled to expire. It'll become clearer then how many households remain without work, without their full incomes, and also how many are facing deferred rent payments that are coming due. Thanks.